let's uh, start with a first component. But for the time being, we just have to clean up what we did last time. So let's put this back to view 3. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. Here we are again in our module 1. And one of the standard tasks you face every day is you have to break up your page in a set of components. Usually you need some reusable composition which basically uh, which you have to reuse in several pages and using the Angular components for that are perfect fit. However, if you want to use Angular components, usually in Angular 1.5 it is a lot of work again, like uh, pretty much the same work or similar work effort, uh, or a similar work effort like creating a view. You have to create the component, you have to create a template, you have to register the component under the correct name and so on and so on. So what can we do here? Basically we start again here with tiny decorations, create component, and then we have to give the component a select name. And here's the first difference. In Angular 1, you use camel case names. Here we use dash names. Uh, now let's call it hello dash world, which is the first component which says hello to our world. H1, hello from first component and now we also want to oops sorry I think it must be that key no. yeah that's the keyboard again yeah there it is okay uh, yeah I have to quickly explain I'm using a Windows keyboard here now and normally I work on the Mac with a Mac keyboard so I have a little bit of a rough time to ad adapt here. Anyway, let's uh, use a reference here. And now we want to create the component. Again, the component has been generated. The template is here. Again, a multi-line template and also there is uh, a proposal on which inputs this component uses. We again use my own uh, tag library, uh, my own annotation library here, which is very similar in this case to what Angular 2 provides, but I'm going to quickly show you the inputs. It's not Angular 2, it's still Angular 1. Okay, what about the module? Let's go to the module again. You've seen uh, the module navigational mechanism we're here again, and there is the hello world, and the hello world also has been added to the exports, which should be enough so that we can use the component in the entire system. Now, how about using that component in view 2? Let's quickly go back to the component. I just want to copy that one because I don't want to type it again. Let's quickly go to view 2. Let's make it multi-line here. Uh, better that way. Let's make it a tag. And now let's add a property here. Okay, and then I quickly have to check the component again. We probably can jump in now. That's not working. Yeah. Okay, then let's do it the hard way. Um, yeah. Here we are. The property, or at least in this case, the attribute is called my hello. So let's go back to view three. Uh, sorry, view two. And then let's add the attribute here. My hello. 
jump in the video because um, I had problems um, recording the first session. The video interrupted earlier, so I'm cutting two videos here. Uh, we were starting to use the few two here. And basically what we added here is uh, that we use the attribute and the control my hello here. And uh, the my hello here is uh, basically hello world from few. If we save that, let's add a two here. So that you see it's really new here. Now Webpack is compiling as you can see. And it compiled successfully. Let's have a look at the page here. We are still in view two here. And hello world from view two. Now if we remove the component here, save, it's gone. Let's add it back. Save again, it's back again. So what happened here is following. We created a component, the hello world component. The component automatically was registered into the module. The tag name and so on was automatically registered so we don't have to take care of that anymore. Just like in Angular 2, you just have to define a tag name on the component level. And then we can use this tag new in any view in the system like we do it here in view three, we can use it in a component. Yeah, that's it. So creating a component now is done without any boilerplate code, or at least a minimum of boilerplate code. And whatever uh, boilerplate is code is needed is is added automatically to your module. You just can create the component, you write your code, you use the component, and you don't have to take care of anything else anymore. I think that's a big improvement over a standard Angular 1 here. In the next part, we are going to cover how to create services, how to create REST calls. Thank you.